Uh, how's the local bond market being uh, been this week? We've seen some flattening in the curve. Has that continued to play out? Definitely, yes, hi, Samantha. Uh, we've seen another five to seven basis point rally over the day in the ultra long end. So there was a very uh, strong auction yesterday. Well supported again in the in, in the in the back end of the yield curve, and it's predominantly based on the fact that there will be no nominal auctions probably for the next four or five weeks and also December is historically quite a big coupon paying month so people going away uh, added with uh, less primary market uh, issuance and coupon flows adds to uh, overweight bond positions I, I, I suppose. Now and then we saw German debt futures hitting session highs today and we got the Spanish bond auction uh, where we saw yields rising there by 12 basis points. Uh, what dynamics are playing out on the global bond market and what type of feed through do you see into local bonds? This is a tricky one because we're at that stage of the year where you know people probably start paying less attention to macro and start thinking more about uh, taking a break. It's been uh, an inordinately long year. It's probably been one of the longest years ever uh, in my time in the financial market. It just and it just doesn't doesn't want to go away. Um, but I think on balance for global bonds, we now also getting to the back end of stimulus. So the markets is probably now starting to expect uh, U.S. Treasury announcing further Treasury purchases. Um, and we've also had the you know the assumption that Spain asked for a sovereign bailout and it panned out to only be banks asking for assistance. Uh, so maybe the market's also a bit confused there. You know, Greece continues to be in the headlines. But, but predominantly speaking, I think global fixed income is now at a level where unless it rallies materially further because of where real rates are, uh, the returns from, the, from this asset class is not going to be uh, great for, for the next 12 months. So the world has to turn you know, materially worse for, for sharp bond gains from here. Yeah. I mean, you started off by looking at your weekly commentary saying uh, that 2012 has been like 15 rounds against Mike Tyson. And you talk about the fatigue. A young Mike Tyson. A young Mike Tyson you talk about. You talk about Correct. fatigue this year. I mean, uh, what are your thoughts on kind of trading and we're going to see next year? Is it going to be more of the same? Do you, do you expect this kind of uh, daily volatility and weekly volatility to persist? Look, uh, in a nutshell, our outlook for 2012 was that it would be a repeat of 2011 with the overlay that it will be less liquid and more volatile because of uh, experimental policies. It does seem that politicians are going to do a whole lot more in 2013 to address or to arrest the global financial crisis. So I think the, the overlay to the 2013 outlook would be a flaw in terms of uh, stimulus. Um, but I do think also that regulations is going to play a, a bigger and bigger role in 2013 which will make the markets probably liquid. So a lot like 2012, but I think it'll be a frustrating year in the sense that volatility will come from massive stimulus rather than, you know, uh, big uh, news headlines. So I think the markets will remain inflated because of stimulus, um, but I don't think it's going to be uh, a, a very volatile year like 2012 where you trade 100 points up, 100 points down. It's probably going to be probably more an overlay of, of what's going on on the macro side. And of course, perhaps the market getting used to political statements, uh, perhaps uh, being contradictory on some days. But Eric, uh, let's turn our attention to reforms in, in the bond market and the prospect of that. Uh, what is the likelihood that 2013 might bring about uh, more transparent bond market trading? That's an interesting question. Uh, look, uh, personally, and, and I've been in the market long enough to, to categorically state that, that uh, there's not an issue on transparency. So there's great price discovery in the market. If you look at the market every day, the whole day, which a lot of us do, I think those that don't have access to the trading platforms and don't look at the markets on a daily basis may find that the price discovery is not to, to their liking. Um, the issue of not seeing the trades go through at the point of execution is one where, you know, if we go to a central order book, that will change over time. And that is definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, whether it's going to improve liquidity in the short term, I'm wary to, to agree with that statement. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, at the moment, the sell side or the market makers, predominantly speaking, are the buyers and sellers of last resort and they are the ones predominantly speaking that keep the market busy um, again predominantly speaking with the what people now call fast money which is uh, the hedge funds um, both local and foreign 
So I don't think the average pension fund or large institutional fund is going to be sitting on the bid and the offer every day. And if you see one or two big guys sit on the bid or offer, that may actually change the dynamics of the market in the short term because people will assume there's a massive sell order, buy order and try and force the market in either direction. So I, I expect growing pains at the onset and it's probably going to be much quieter on the essential order books than some people would hope it to be. But there's definitely not a lack of transparency or price discovery in this market. That's uh, hogwash.